Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I recently asked the viewers for some topics, some video suggestions, and I got a whole bunch back from you guys. So I'm going to be trying to cover a bunch of these. And one of the suggestions that I got from multiple viewers had to do with storing soft plastics and whether or not your plastics tend to go bad over time. And it's a really good question because I think a lot of us probably are sitting on packs of plastics that we've had for 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, and you don't know whether or not those baits are going to degrade or maybe they lose the scent or they, they you know, stiffen up. There's things that can happen to your soft plastics that tend to uh, lead to them going bad. Now, ultimately, there's a bunch of different variables that come into how you store it, as well as the type of material that the bait is made out of that will determine whether or not your baits go bad over time. Today's video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app, which will help you select the best fishing places in the lake with features like the lake level, the current flow, the top baits tool, which will help you select the best baits for certain locations throughout the lake. Whether that's a clear water, stained water, dirty water, it'll choose the best bait for that location, provide you with all the information like what structure, what retrieve, different reel, all of the information that you need to catch the fish. This is in the app. The cool part about this app, though, is it's not just based on areas. It does provide you with specific tournament winning data that has been collected to help you figure out your best choices for baits and locations for whatever region of the lake it is that you want to fish. On top of that, not only does the app provide you with best locations, it gives you water clarity as well. So maybe you're on a lake like Lake You Follow, where there is a bunch of different water clarity located throughout the entire lake. This will help you identify the clearest portions as well as the dirtiest portions of the lake. Plus, the Deep Dive app has now added the wind effect map, which is going to take all of the different wind conditions for the past couple of days and show you what banks on the lake are being hit the hardest. They also have inflow points that show you different places throughout the lake where your water is being flushed into the lake through different ditches and creeks and rivers, providing you with high percentage places to fish and letting you know what parts of the lake are going to be the best areas after a rain. Check out the Deep Dive app to help you become a better angler. The number one thing that determines whether or not your soft plastics are going to go bad is the material that they're made out of. Some materials that are used do tend to degrade and break down and dry out over time. Generally speaking, if your package was sealed properly, it's not going to happen in a, you know, in a short amount of time. It's going to take years upon years upon years. And for a bait to fully dry out, generally there needs to be some airflow. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I personally like to keep all of my soft plastics in the bags that they came in. I know there's a lot of anglers out there that like to take the soft plastic out, lay them nicely in some form of tray. Uh, the problem with that is if those baits have a tendency to dry out, they're going to dry out much faster when they're not in a sealed container. So for me, I personally like to keep my soft plastics in the bags that they came in. Uh, and generally, I always try to make sure that they're sealed up. The Berkley uh, Max Scent is a really good uh example of this. If you let that bag stay open, they will tend to dry out over time. If you keep the bag sealed with the Ziploc that it comes in, they will last for years upon years upon years. But that's the number one thing. You know, a lot of the old packages of soft plastics, you know, baits like this, this is the old Riverside Air Fry series. This is the original Yamamoto Senkos. These packs are about 30 years old at this point. Both of them are extremely usable still. They have been stored properly. They're in good condition. They have not dried out. And a big part of that just comes to the fact that these had a Ziploc seal. A lot of plastics back in the day did not come with Ziploc seals or, uh, you know, packages that could be resealed after they were opened. Meaning if you opened them, they never were fully airtight. Those are the ones that tend to dry out over time. And generally speaking, if you're at, say, a garage sale and you see somebody selling this old pack, you can just tell by the feel of the baits whether they're dried out or not. That's just something that you can evaluate really quickly. But if the, if the bait 
is still in the original packaging and it's been sealed for that amount of time and it's been sealed to the point where no airflow was getting in and out they tend to hold up very well just from uh, a consistency standpoint some baits again if you're looking back at some of the older rubber worms uh, those tend to dry out much faster you know today's material that are being used in our soft plastics uh, generally don't dry out nearly as much even if you leave them sit out like some of the older rubber baits that were kind of the original rubber worms now we call them plastic worms uh, because it's a different material but the first thing you always want to look at anytime you're talking about your older baits is the package itself was it sealed properly did it have airflow you know if you had a small pinhole in it those baits will tend to dry out much faster than a bait that was in a package with no airflow at all going back and forth. Another thing I like to pay attention to is how were those how were those bags kept? Now, for me, I'm lucky enough to have pegboard. I keep my baits that I know I'm going to use uh, on the pegboard, so they're they're stored in a position where the baits are going to lay flat, and you don't have 30 other pounds of soft plastics on top of them. One thing that I see a lot of people do that's not necessarily wrong, but it can damage your baits is they tend to throw a bunch of baits in a big Tupperware tin and that Tupperware tin gets stacked up. And after, you know, not much time, actually, after even just a few weeks, but if they're there for a year or a couple of years without being moved and this bag was like crinkled up, your baits are probably going to take the shape of that and they're going to end up being kinked as well. And with some soft plastics, like exam, uh, uh, say a zoom fluke, you know, if, if that bait is kinked and it's not straight, it won't run the right way. Uh, so you want to make sure they're stored properly where the baits are laid flat. You know, they're not turned over if you can prevent that. I know there's some ways, you know, you can, you can boil your baits to try to bring back some of that uh, natural shape. It does work, but it's just one extra step. If they were stored properly, you wouldn't have to, to worry about that. Uh, another thing to take into account is did that bait was that bait stored with some form of liquid uh, you know a scent you know you get some soft plastics when you look at them they're just super juicy you know like a the old culprit worms were one that used to come with uh, you know some liquid in it and those tend to help keep the baits moist and keep them in better shape one thing to keep in mind with that though is if you know that one of those baits used to come with some sort of liquid and you happen to go to a you know a resale shop and find a bag of it and there is no liquid in it it's been dried up that that should let you know that that bait's probably not going to perform the same way the original ones did and i tend not to buy those if you do see a pack that's 35 years old and it's still got the liquid that the baits came in you know some of that juice that oil that's sliding around that would be a good reason to buy that bait indicating that it still is in really good shape overall uh personally from a storage standpoint the two biggest things that i can recommend uh other than keeping the baits flat keeping them in a place where you don't have a lot of pressure on it and keeping the packages sealed is to make sure you keep them out of the sun uh you know for me if this bait you can see i've got a little bit of sun maybe you can't see it but if that bait's sitting in the sun they they will tend to fade they also will tend to dry out if there is a little bit of airflow so for me i don't like to have my baits in the sun because the sun will change the color of them so i think that's something to keep in mind i also like to keep them in a place where they don't have major uh temperature changes similar to fish, uh, fishing line i don't like them to be you know in freezing temps at one point in the in the winter and then in the summer have them be in a place where they could be in 120 degree heat if they're in the sun and in a place that just tends to get really hot uh, i think if you can keep them in a place that has re regular temperatures you know something that's in your 70s without much fluctuation i think they tend to hold up better over time the majority of baits out there if they're still in the sealed pack are still going to be in pretty usable condition you know and a, a lot of it really just comes down to the bait if some are in uh some of them tend to degrade over time some of them will hold up probably for another 100 years but storage is the main key so i don't just throw a pack of baits out because they're uh in an old pack i mean 
In fact, a lot of these older ones tend to go for a premium because people are looking for them if they think that the original formula of that bait was better than whatever the formula is that's now. Uh, but hopefully this answers the viewer's question. I appreciate it. Like I said, I had multiple people ask this. And I've had people ask for this in the past. So hopefully uh, it helps answer that for you. And if you've got other suggestions, please put that in the video suggestion in the comment section. And I will try to answer those for you as well. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow.